Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video on using supply and demand data to understand stock market fluctuations. We're going to go and take this Econ 101 theory and bring it to practice when looking at actual market data. Let's go. So the motivation for this video is as follows. There are a lot of people who understand supply and demand but have difficulty applying it to analyzing actual market phenomenon. Some would go as far as to say that the model is flawed altogether because most market data which we observe looks very far from being in equilibrium or anything which approximates one. The main thing to note is that the reason why it's useful to think in terms of market equilibrium is because it gives us a way of thinking about what causes economic data to move. In the coming slides, we'll see how we can use this framework of supply and demand to identify sources of changes in market prices and quantities traded. So we have two main concepts. Uh, that we're going to want to keep in mind. We have your Econ 101 chart on your left where you have uh, your upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand curve, and we have that point where they meet, which is an equilibrium. And then we have um, in our contacts, financial data, uh, where we're going to observe prices moving around. And we're going to also have data on quantities. But in stock market data, we refer to this quantity as volume, which is the number of shares traded. Now, the main thing to go and keep in mind with what puts both these pictures together is that these curves are always moving a little bit each time and that's what goes and generates this picture on the right hand side now just to go and make this clear uh, for what's going on under each point right we have a new uh equilibrium that is there so there is this transaction that is always going and occurring. So really, if we know that this is what's driving this process, how could we go and tell a story? Now, in order to go and understand fluctuations, we have to remember only four things could really go and happen um, in your short run analysis uh, for supply and demand, because that's what we're gonna be going and focusing on. We're looking at shifts in one curve at a time, but we want to go and break these down in terms of changes in prices and changes in quantities. So there's really only four things that could really happen. Um, the first case is where we have a change in price, which goes and increases, and the change in quantity, which is going to go and increase. And we ask the question, well, what's going and happening here? Well, in that case, we have a demand shift, which is moving to the right. Um, in this case, you know, since this data is moving, you know, pretty quickly, right? We're going to say, well, what is the dominant shift? So we're going to say, well, there's a right word demand shift. Likewise, if we see an increase in price and decrease in quantity, we could say that our supply shifts left. Decrease in price, increase in quantity, supply shifts right. Decrease and decrease in both price and quantity, that is going to result in a demand shift left. Again, it's important to note that there are only four things that can happen in this case, especially when we're looking at financial data. Using the framework of supply and demand to analyze market dynamics tells us what's going on behind changes in price and quantities. Is it a supply side or is it demand side factor? It does not tell us what the root causes of this shift, but it gives us a place to start looking, whether we should look on the supply side or the demand side. A good analyst can tell a story with regards to these changes, but this often involves taking a look into the nature of the market and actual news. So. I hope um, this video gives you some grounding in terms of thinking about why this framework of supply and demand is useful and how you can actually use it to analyze market data, you know, without using any statistical methods, right? Just by using, you know, two lines on a piece of paper, kind of a back of the napkin type of method. Um, and it's really, really, really useful because it tells you where you should start looking. So I hope this video uh, was educational or at the very least entertaining. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care.